this is my son's room. Go, Monica. Jimmy, hi. Hi. Don, hi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, welcome. G'day. Right, well, while we're having something to eat, you know, uh, bog in, um, I want to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, there's always a catch. <laughs> First of all, listen, congratulations both of you on the album, uh, especially in Australia, because it's like now what, number two for the fifth week, uh, yeah. keeping out Kiss, which is pretty difficult, I'd imagine, because it was selling by the tons, and, and the Rolling Stones are having problems with you as well. Uh, you must be knocked out with that. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Can't stop the music's kept you. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a shame about that. Yeah. We'll have to make a film next time we do an album. <laughs> <laughs> Mad enough. Um, <laughs> listen, what's happening overseas? <clears throat> yeah, well, Rod, our manager, is over in Los Angeles negotiating at the moment. Yeah. And uh, with uh, four companies. Uh, earlier this week, we were told there was a release date, but Rod told me this morning that it, that isn't confirmed at all, that it's another Australian rumour. So. Um, there's not much confirmed, is it? There's just a lot happening. What about on the English side? The English uh, will be releasing uh, Cheap Wine as a single in two weeks. Right. But they're going to see how that goes before they go with an album release. I sort of felt that Breakfast at Sweethearts had got nearer to you as a live sound. You disagree with me on that, but you do agree that the, that the East album is nearer to what cultures allow on stage and that live thing. Yeah, well, with the East, when we did the East album, uh, we tried uh, this time uh, to keep overdubs and things like that down to a minimum. Right. That way, uh, it's you know easier to produce, uh, reproduce the songs live. Uh, when we did um, when we did breakfast, another problem we had with breakfast was uh, we were travelling, touring, and recording at the same time. Right. We'd have a week here, a week there. You know, work for three weeks, so we didn't get the the, the flow that we really needed for that album. It's a shame because a lot of good songs were sort of uh, we think could have been a lot better that song. I think on the last, on Breakfast, like the only song that was actually written in the studio was Plaza, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, uh, for this album there was Rising Sun was written in the studio. Right. Uh, My Baby was written in the studio. Uh, Cheap Wine was written in the studio. Ida was written in the studio. What else? Was, uh, there was a whole pile of them, but just, they just kept, like, it was the best we've, we've ever been in the studios. Well, what made these thing? I mean, Marco Pitt, obviously being the, the producer, but, um, and how, how close do you, I mean, how much influence does Mark have on you, and how? Oh, on, on the sound and everything. Tremendous influence. We've been working with Mark for about 12 months now. Initially, he was just straight producing it. Um, right. But he's he's sort of, he's taught us so many lessons that uh, now it's more into a co-production situation. We just work as a team. Yeah. Uh, he's very clever. OK, I saw you last night at the Bombay Rock in Melbourne. Um, and the thing that amazes me is that there is very little dressing up as far as you're concerned with your lighting or anything like that, it's pure just the music itself. Is that the way you've always wanted it and it'll remain like that? Yeah, I think we're a lot more dressed up now than we've, than ever, we, been. we've ever been. I think now it's about the most dressed up we'll ever be. Yeah? We never really depended on things like that, because like, mm. mainly, like, the main thing we worry about, like, I know it was half since the band started, has, has been sort of getting the, the music together and the band itself. Right. Because I reckon if the band's strong enough and, and together enough, they can carry it through in and you don't have to have lights, you know? Yeah. Wait, you know, a couple of globes up the top, you know, 240s, you know? You were saying just before that uh, you get uh, a lot of your inspirations by reading newspapers and things like that. Yeah. Um, like, let's take a lot of your songs. I mean, there's so much jail reference. You've never been in jail, have you? Uh, only visiting. Yeah? So where do you get those ideas from? Well, we've played a couple of times in jails, and uh, I've <coughs> I've gone out to a, a jail in Sydney a couple of times, and, right. and uh, because there's some guys producing some music out there, and just had a look at what they're doing. Right, well, let's take uh, Khe San as far as Vietnam was concerned. You were never in Vietnam either, were you? No, but I knew some guys who were over there. Right. So you sort of just accumulate all this information, and then it just sort of sometimes comes out in your songs. Is it? Yeah. Photographic memory. And what about yours? Through the haze, I'd imagine. Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> I read a lot of comics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, most of mine I write, I get ideas for hook lines. Right. Mainly, like, you know, so obviously. Um, and I write the base the rest of the song around the hook line. And, yeah. Uh, now, the Star Hotel, I gather, is the Newcastle incident, isn't yeah. it? And was that something you saw on the news or? Yeah. Or had or you spoken to people that were involved in it, or what? Oh, I read it in the newspapers. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think with Star Hotel, there's a lot of um, like underneath the, the surface. It's not just about the Star Hotel. Right. It's um, I think it's just about general, you know, unrest. Like there's a lot happening in Melbourne with uh, like mm. who was it? Uh, Frankston, was it? Yeah. 
that, like those sort of riots where the kids are just getting really bored and sort of mm. aggro, you know, and it's all coming out. I think that's what sort of Star Hotel is mainly about. Anyway, it's been great talking to you. Well, one thing I just want to say, just before yeah. you go, um, last night absolutely confirmed it in my book. Uh, to me, I mean, I, I, I like Splittings a lot, and I, 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 my six on the Angels, but without a reserved doubt, I think you're the best rock and roll band in the country. I think that's fine. All right, <laughs> don't start on me, don't well, See you later. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well. E cordon. A big fun? What does that mean? Behave yourself. Good, good. Jimmy Barnes just told me to behave myself. Well, isn't that the pot color calling the kettle black? And now with Ian Moss up front, Cole Chisel, my baby.